Hello again, everyone, and uh, welcome to our video on advanced geometry, uh, or more specifically, circles and three-dimensional shapes. Um, so the first, we're going to start, of course, with circles, which are generally a little simpler than three-dimensional shapes, but do get a little difficult at times, um, particularly because circles often involve other shapes. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is cover exactly what a circle is. A circle is, of course, basically um, a series of points, right? Uh, a shape that is not made up of lines. Right, that are equidistant from a point that is, of course, called its center. Right, so the distance from the center to any point on the circle. This is obviously not a perfect circle, right? Um, though with my poor artistry, probably as close as we're going to get. Right, but of course we have uh, we have a center to any circle, and from that circle, any straight line to the edge of the, or excuse me, from that center, any straight line to the edge of the circle is going to be what's called its radius. Right, okay. So any and all of these lines are exactly the same distance, and they are all what's called the radius. Now. A line drawn directly through the center of the circle, all the way across, right? Um, obviously, that's not exactly a line, but you get the picture. Um, is what's called the diameter, which is, of course, then going to be equal to 2 times its radius. Okay, so let's talk real quick about some of the basics of circles, right? Um, so the circumference of any circle, right? Uh, which is basically what we would call in another shape the perimeter, right? The length around the edges of it, right? Is going to be equal to 2 pi r, where r is, of course, the radius. And the area of any given circle, right, is of course going to be equal to pi r squared. If any of you out there have taken calculus, you'll recognize that the circumference equation is of course the derivative of the area equation. Um, but that is not necessarily important for our, uh, for our purposes. Uh, now, you'll also probably want to know that the diameter of a circle, right, is equal to 2 times its radius, right, as we covered just a minute ago, right? So either one of these two lines that make up this diameter that we just drew, would qualify as the radius of the uh, of the circle as well. So another way to write the circumference equation, if it's easier for you, would be 2d, or excuse me, not 2d, of course, but pi d, right? Because we are uh, eliminating the 2r. We're turning the 2r basically into a diameter, right? Because the two are equal. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at a quick practice problem that'll demonstrate how exactly we can work with circles. And as you can see at the bottom of your screen, our question is, what is the circumference of a circle with an area of 64 pi? Now, this, of course, doesn't involve even looking at a circle at all, right? It's just, uh, we know, let's just remember our two equations real quick, right? The circumference of a circle is equal to 2 pi r, whereas the area of a circle is equal to pi r squared. And we're given, of course, that our area equals 64 pi, right? So through the, through substitution, right, we can go ahead and write out that pi r squared equals 64 pi, which is going to then very quickly get us to our, um, of course, to our radius, right, which we can then plug back into our circumference equation to solve this question, right? So if you go ahead and uh, divide both sides by pi real quick, right, make this much simpler, right, eliminate those pi's, eliminate those pi's, we're going to be left with r squared equals 64, right? And now just to find our radius real quick, just take the square root of both sides. Um, and you're going to be left with r, of course, equals 8. Now, uh, now that we've gotten our radius, we can very quickly plug that back into our circumference equation, right? So if circumference equals 2 pi r, the circumference of this circle is going to equal 2 pi times 8, right? Um, so our circumference of this circle then is going to be 16 pi. So what we've learned there, right, is that uh, anytime we're given either an area or a circumference, we can always work backwards to our radius, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at a, another practice problem, one that actually does involve a diagram. Okay, so as you can see in this question, we're going to cover uh, arc lengths, which many students actually find quite difficult, but are not actually that difficult. They're just a little confusing, right? So an arc length is really just a percent of the circumference, right? So our, our question reads, what is the length here of arc AB, right? Well, we're given our radius, right, because the distance from the center of the circle, point O, to the edge of the circle here, point B, is 10, right? So very easily we can find the circumference of our circle, right? We just need to say c equals 2 pi r, right? So c equals 2 pi times 10, right? So our circumference of the circle is then going to be 20 pi, right? So 20 pi would be the distance around the entire edge of the circle. But we're only interested in the arc between points A and B, right? So the good news is we know the degree measure, right, of the area that we're considering, right? of this arc, right? So we know that this percentage of the arc, right, is going to be equal to 144 over the 360 
total degrees in the circle, right? So to find the arc length of AB, all we need to do is take the total circumference of the circle, which we found over here, and multiply it, right, by 144 over 360. So let's go ahead and do that, times 20 pi, right? And if you plug that into your calculator real quick, you will actually find that uh, 144 over 360 reduces down to uh, 2 fifths, right? So 2 fifths of 20 pi then is going to give us a final answer of 8 pi, right? Okay, so that is equal to the length of arc AB, right? Everybody see that? Now let's go ahead and take a look at another question dealing with this very same circle. So as you can see at the bottom of your screen, our new question is, what is the area of the sector labeled K? Uh, now basically, this question follows exactly the same principles, right? So all we're going to do then is we're going to find the area of the entire circle, right? Which we already have our radius, which is 10, right? So if the area equals pi r squared, the area of the circle is just going to be um, pi times 10 squared, right? So our area is going to equal 100 pi. Right? So we're going to follow, again, exactly exactly the same principles. Right? Um, so if this area of the circle had a degree measure of 144 degrees, and we know that there are 360 total degrees in a circle, right? we know that the difference between those two is going to be, uh, or the difference between 360 and 144 is going to be the, the degree measure of this sector out here. Right? So 360 minus 144 right, over the 360 degrees it total in the circle is going to be the percentage of the circle covered by the area marked sector K right there, right? So if we go ahead and uh, subtract 144 from 360, we're going to be left with uh, a fraction of 216 over 360, which if we reduce down, we're going to find 3 fifths, right? Um, we also could have logic that out, right, from, uh, from our previous one, knowing that this 144 degrees covered 2 fifths of the circle very logically uh, the rest of the circle should be three-fifths of the total circle, right? So now all we need to do is multiply that three-fifths times uh, the, um, the 100 pi that is the area of the total circle, right? So um, the area of sector K, right, is just going to equal three-fifths, right, times 100 pi. Oh, excuse me, that is not 100 pi, right? Okay, so very quickly, the area of sector K is then going to ultimately equal 60 pi, right? Okay, so, so let's go ahead and take a look at one more circle problem, and this is a problem that's going to uh, require our knowledge that we previously acquired in our polygons video, right, um, of other shapes, uh, which will frequently happen in circles questions. So let's take a look. Okay, so as you can see here, in what is uh, perhaps our greatest example of my poor artistry yet, um, we have a question in which a circle is inscribed in a square. So let's take a look at the question. Uh, in the figure, a circle O of radius 6 is inscribed in square A, B, C, D, right? So this is square A, B, C, D, yeah? Um, so what is the area of the shaded region? And as you can see, I've, you know, the, the sort of parts of the square that aren't overlapped by the circle are the shaded regions, the parts that I've, uh, you know, marked with pinstripes there. Now, what's important to know about any figure being inscribed in another, um, particularly circles and squares, is that it's going to create what's called a tangent line, right? So, uh, obviously, you can't really tell because my artwork is not uh, as stellar as one might hope, but at each point uh, where this square touches the circle in the corner there, it touches it at exactly one point, right? And then goes off. Uh, like, it doesn't, the, the shapes don't overlap at all. That is what's meant by inscribed. They only touch it exactly one point. Okay, so we're given the radius here, right, which is a radius of 6. So let's go ahead and fill in our radius. We know that our radius is 6, right? So the question asks us to find the area of the shaded region. So very simply, we can find first the area of the circle, right? So the area of the circle is going to equal, uh, well, pi r squared, right, or pi times 6 squared, right, which is then going to equal 36 pi. Now, we're also going to need the area of the square, right? Which, as we remember, is just going to be length times width. But how do we know the area of the square? How do we know the length and the width of the square? Well, since we know that our radius is 6, our diameter, right, the length across is 2 times the radius, right? So that must be 12, right? So if we know that each of our sides has a length of 12, the area of our square is just going to be uh, 12 times 12, or 144, 
right? Now, we found the area of our square and we found the area of our circle. What we've been tasked with is to find the area of the shaded region. Um, now, how are we going to do that? Well, let's think about this logically for just a second, right? So if we have, uh, we have a circle inscribed in a square, uh, the square is obviously larger than the circle, right? So all we need to do is subtract from the area of the square the area of the circle, right? Because all the entire shaded region is just the part of the square that isn't covered by the circle. So we can very simply just take the 144, that is the area of our square, and subtract from it 36 pi. Now, we could actually put that into our calculator and get a nice decimal answer there. Um, it would be something like uh, 31 in the end, but that's not important, right? Um, what well, this is actually an acceptable answer on the SAT. Your answer choices will appear in this format because anytime you have a pi, you will not be expected to turn into a decimal ever. Pi will always just remain pi on the SAT. Of course, sometimes it may be canceled, right, if you're comparing two, two equations that both have pi in them, right, or two expressions, rather. Um, but if you get a final answer that has pi in it, that is ultimately going to be your final answer. Okay, so that's circles. Um, let's go ahead and move on to three-dimensional figures. All right, so moving on to three-dimensional shapes, which are probably the more difficult of the topics covered in this video. Um, there's going to be two main types of uh, three-dimensional shapes that you're going to see on the SAT. Um, the first is going to be a rectangular solid or a rectangular prism. You might see it referred to either way, uh, as well as a cylinder, or which is sometimes referred to as a right cylinder. Now, there's just a couple quick formulas we need to remember for these. Um, now, for the volume of a rectangular solid, uh, we're basically just going to need to know that it's uh, found by the length times the width times the height. So, right, so basically exactly the same way you'd go about finding the area of a rectangle, right, but you just add in the height. Um, and similarly, to find the surface area, right, um, of a uh, rectangular solid, right, you're going to just do uh, two times the length times the width plus two times the length times the height plus two times the height times the width, right? If you think about this logically, basically a rectangular solid is just made up of six different rectangular faces, right? So uh, each of which is going to have an exact pair opposite it. So to find the exact um, exact surface area, you basically just need to find the volume of each of the each of the faces and add them together, right? So now for a right cylinder, uh, which I'll draw for you in just a minute to explain, right? So the volume of a cylinder is going to look something like this. It's basically going to be exactly like the, the area of a circle, right, except you're going to add the dimension of height, which is effectively what it is. So let's just go ahead and take a quick look at what each of these things looks like. All right, so on the left side, you can see we have a rectangular solid. Sometimes you might see it, see it drawn uh, where you can see all parts of it, right, uh, probably implying that it is, you know, um, not a solid figure per se, but just a figure that has space within it. Kind of shaped like a loaf of bread, as you can see. Now, a right cylinder, a little bit harder to uh, represent pictorially, um, but it's basically just a circle with the uh, dimension of height added to it. Think of like a, um, say, like a Pringles can, perhaps. That's a cylinder, right? Okay, so let's take a couple look at, uh, let's take a quick look at a couple practice problems, uh, one for each type of shape. So the first one you'll see there at the bottom of your screen reads, if a rectangular solid has a length of two feet and a width of four feet and a volume of 88 cubic feet, what is its height? Okay, so if you remember, the volume of a rectangular solid, right, equals its length times its width times its height, right? So there's four variables here, right? The total volume, the length, the width, and the height, of which we are given three, right? We're given the volume as being 88 uh, cubic feet, right? Um, which is going to, we can set then equal to um, the length times the width times the height. And we're given values for the length and the width, so it's going to be two times four times the height, right? So basically, just a quick solve, right? So 88 equals 8h, and divide both sides by 8, uh, and we're going to be left with a height of, of course, then 10 feet, right? Okay, that wasn't too difficult. Just basically uh, using, using our basic formulas. But let's take a look at a much more difficult cylinders problem now. So if you read the problem at the bottom of your screen, it's uh, perhaps the longest problem we've seen thus far. It's a word problem. Um, so part of our job is, of course, going to be translating from the English of the question to the algebra that we need to solve it. Um, let's read it real quick. Victoria is throwing a party. If she wants to serve each of her nine guests 20 ounces of lemonade from a single pitcher, and each ounce of lemonade takes up one half pi cubic inches of space, how tall must the pitcher be if it has a diameter of six inches? 
Now, we're given a lot of information here, um, and we have a lot of work to do to solve this problem, but none of the individual steps is that hard, right? So the first step is basically to find out exactly how many ounces she needs. Well, she wants to serve each of her guests 20 ounces, right? And she has uh, nine total guests, right? So 20 times nine, right, uh, is going to give us uh, number 180 total ounces, right? Okay, so the next step then is to figure out just how much cubic space this takes up, right? Which is going to tell us how large we need our pitcher to be. Um, so uh, if we know that each ounce takes up one half pi of cubic space, right? And that we have 180 ounces total that we need uh, served or to be able to be served, right? We know that ultimately we're going to need then from that simple multiplication problem 90 pi, right? Uh, cubic inches of space in our pitcher, in our cylinder, right? Okay, so now our only job is to find out exactly how large the cylinder is. Well, we're told, right, that our cylinder has a diameter of 6 inches, right? So we know then that it's going to have, um, of course, a radius of 3, right? Because remember, d divided by 2 equals r, right? The radius is just half the diameter, right? So if we have a radius of 3, we know then that to get to our 90 pi, so we're going to do basically the same thing we just did in our uh, rectangular solid problem, right? We're going to take, um, of course, the total area that we need and plug it in for our volume, right? So let's go ahead and write down the volume equation one more time. The volume of a cylinder is equal to pi r squared h, right? And so we can solve, we have, we have uh, values to plug in for every variable here except for, of course, that h, right? So the volume we're going to end up needing is 90 pi, right? Uh, which we can then set equal to pi times 3 squared, right, times h, okay? So go ahead and solve it out. Um, 90 pi equals, what is it going to be, 9 pi h, right? Okay, so we're going to just go ahead and divide both sides by 9 pi, divide both sides by 9 pi. Of course, our pi's are going to cancel on both sides. Our 9's will cancel over here. And we'll be left with a final answer of h equals 10 inches, right? Okay, great job, everyone. Thank you for watching, as always. And uh, we'll see you in the next video, which I do believe will be the last video in our series. And we'll cover logic problems and uh, perhaps a bit of advanced algebra.